Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. You're watching Big Day's Family Adventures, and today on Episode 2, The Grand Canyon. Williams, Arizona, located just 60 miles south of Grand Canyon National Park, makes it an ideal gateway to the Grand Canyon. Williams is home to the Grand Canyon Railway, established in 1901, that runs to the South Rim daily, returning each evening to the Grand Canyon Railway Resort and Station. Established in 1876, Williams became the gateway to the Grand Canyon in 1919 when the Grand Canyon National Park had been established and the Santa Fe Railroad stretched from Williams to the South Rim. However, due to the invention of the automobiles, rail service to the Grand Canyon ceased in 1968 but thankfully was later revived and restored as a Grand Canyon Railway in 1989. Tucson, located five to seven miles away from the entrance of the National Park, is the place that you want to stop first and fill up your gas tanks, for there is no gas stations available inside the National Park. Tucson is the closest town outside of the National Park where you can find hotel accommodations and other businesses. And to avoid traffic, you want to arrive as early as possible, unlike us who arrived at 3 p.m. We are now inside the park. Shall we get started then? Enjoy! But wait, stop! Please be cautious because you will definitely see a lot of animals in the Grand Canyon National Park. If you're looking to stay within the National Park itself, Yavapai Lodge is one of your options that will run you about 205 a night during the summer. Your other options would be to stay in Williams, Arizona or even possibly at Tucson, Arizona. The Canyon Village Market and General Store is a full-service grocery store, a souvenir shop, and a general store all-in-one. Hey, my fellow letter carriers from the United States Postal Service. I couldn't resist getting myself a postcard and mailing it to myself from the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon covers an area of over 1,900 square miles, runs a length of 277 miles, is over 18 miles wide, and at least one mile deep. For the next few minutes, I'll show you viewpoints along Desert View Drive up to Grand View Point, which is in the middle of the map. The National Park of Grand Canyon consists of the South Rim and also the North Rim. There is also a non-national park area called Grand Canyon West, which is the closest to Las Vegas, Nevada, about a two-hour drive. At Grand Canyon West, you will find the Glass Skywalk, known as the Grand Canyon Skywalk Tours, not at the South Rim of the Grand Canyon. At the Grand Canyon Skywalk Tours, personal photography and videos are not allowed and there is a pricey entrance fee to the area like an amusement park. This video was filmed entirely at the South Rim, the most visited portion of what's known as the Grand Canyon National Park. The South Rim is about a five hour drive from Las Vegas, Nevada and the North Rim Grand Canyon which I was not able to visit yet is about another six hour drive from the South Rim. Grand Canyon National Park celebrated its 100th year centennial on February 26, 2019. But did you know that we almost lost the Grand Canyon in the late 1960s? More on that later, but here is some history of the Grand Canyon National Park.
Lieutenant Joseph C. Ives, who was an explorer of the Grand Canyon in 1861, concluded with one of the most infamous proclamations, quote, the region is of course altogether valueless, and after entering it there is nothing to do but leave. Our party has been the first, and will doubtless be the last, to visit this profitless locality. Can you imagine what would have happened if two dams were built in the Grand Canyon, flooding the area? Perhaps Lieutenant Joseph C. Eyes would have been right calling the Grand Canyon valueless. But thankfully, somebody considered it priceless. Teddy Roosevelt, whom the teddy bear is named after, stepped off of a train at the South Rim in 1903. And when former President Theodore Roosevelt visited the Grand Canyon and added nationalism to the mix by declaring it a natural wonder absolutely unparalleled throughout the rest of the world, Roosevelt famously said of the canyon, leave it as it is, you cannot improve on it, the ages have been at work on it, and man can only mar it. What you can do is to keep it for your children, your children's children, and for all who come after you as the one great sight which every American should see. Bridge Canyon Dam, also called Wallapai Dam, was a proposed dam in the lower end of the Grand Canyon of the Colorado River in northern Arizona. First proposed in the 1920s, this project was seriously considered by the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation for a period of over 20 years from the 1950s to 1968. If built, this dam would have stood over 740 feet tall, forming a reservoir stretching more than 90 miles upstream, including 13 miles along the border of the Grand Canyon National Park. This was just one of three dams proposed for the area. The second proposal known as Marble Canyon Dam, also known as Redwall Dam, was a proposed project on the Colorado River in Arizona. This project was intended to impound a relatively small reservoir in the central portion of Marble Canyon to develop hydroelectric power.
Together with Bridge Canyon Dam located at the lower end of the Grand Canyon, this project would have flooded large portions of the Grand Canyon and its number of natural features including Redwall Cavern and Vassie's Paradise. The upper dam was supposed to be located just above the cavern and was sometimes referred to as Red Wall Dam. However, and thankfully in 1969, President Lyndon B. Johnson proclaimed the establishment of Marble Canyon National Monument, effectively forestalling the possibility of a dam in Marble Canyon. In 1975, the monument was added to the Grand Canyon National Park by the Grand Canyon Enlargement Act. That stopped two of the three proposed dams, but one dam was built. Okay guys, tip number one for sunrise, location, location, location. Tip number two, scout out your location the day before. Tip number three is to get to your location early to set up and get to that spot before other people will grab your perfect spot. For the sunrise will rise about five o'clock in the morning during the summertime which means you will have to get up about 4 o'clock in the morning and get to your location as early as you can.
the El Tovar. Designed by Chicago architect Charles Whittlesey, the structure was conceived as a cross between a Swiss chalet and Norwegian villa in an effort to accommodate the elite of the era. First opening its doors in 1905, the El Tovar was built from local limestone and Oregon pine, costing nearly 250000 to build. First owned and operated by the Fred Harvey Company in conjunction with the Santa Fe Railroad, many considered it the most elegant hotel west of the Mississippi River. The reason I'm showcasing this hotel is because of that flagpole behind the El Tovar for best panoramic photos. The design which had been carried out by railroad's architect Charles Whittlesey of Topeka, Kansas and was projected to cost $250,000 to build, rejecting the initial plan to call it the Bright Angel Tavern, the tradition of using Spanish names for the Harvey Hotels was continued for the new hotel. Since the name of the canyon's discoverer, Garcia Lopez de Cardenas, was given to an existing Harvey Hotel, the hotel was named after Pedro de Tovar, or de Tovar, who had reported rumors of a large river in the area, inspiring the Cardenas expedition. The hotel was built as a designation resort, providing a high level of comfort and luxury standing literally on the edge of the wilderness, just 20 feet from the rim of the canyon. In 1987, the hotel was designated a National Historic Landmark. President Roosevelt returned to stay at the El Tovar in 1911 and again in 1913, writing a book about his 1913 trip. The lobby behind the broad entry veranda extends to four stories topped with a turret with a pyramidical roof. The hotel's entrance is on the side of the building with the canyon to the left at a right angle to the railroad terminal directly across the street. This wing runs towards the canyon almost to its edge extending in a porch overlooking the canyon and the south wing runs away from the canyon ending in a semi-octagonal space once called the grotto. The dining room is to the rear of the lobby with views of the canyon throughout its windows.
To access Hermit's Rest to Maricopa Point during the peak summer season, you will need to take the Red Line Shuttle service as automobiles will not be allowed on the route. The last train out of Grand Canyon Railway's Grand Canyon Station is exactly at 3.30 p.m. You want to make sure you don't miss this train because it will leave without you and it's going to be pretty pricey to get back to the Grand Canyon Railway Station in Williams, Arizona. The one proposed dam that was built is known as the Glen Canyon Dam, a concrete arch gravity dam on the Colorado River in northern Arizona near the town of Page. This 710 foot high dam was built by the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation in 1966 and forms Lake Powell which is one of the largest man-made reservoirs in the United States with 27 million acres in feet capacity. The dam is named after Glen Canyon, a series of deep sandstone gorges now flooded by the reservoir, and Lake Powell is named for John Wesley Powell, who in 1869 led the first expedition to traverse the Colorado's Grand Canyon by boat. The long and winding Lake Powell, known for its scenic beauty and recreational opportunities, include houseboating, fishing, and water skiing. This attracts millions of tourists each year to the Glen Canyon National Recreation Area. The dam has been criticized for the large evaporative losses from Lake Powell and its impact on the ecology of the Grand Canyon, which just lies downstream, and environmental groups continue to advocate for the dam's removal but water managers and utilities state that the dam is a major source of renewable energy and provides a vital defense against severe droughts. Since first filling to capacity in 1980, Lake Powell and Glen Canyon Dam is often referred to as the Lost Grand Canyon. Beginning in the late 1990s, the Sierra Club and other organizations renewed the call to dismantle the dam and drain Lake Powell in Lower Glen Canyon. The issue remains a controversial one as during years of drought, Glen Canyon guarantees a water delivery to the lower basin states without the need for rationing in the upper basin. And in wet years, it captures extra runoff for future use. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do and hit that like button and don't forget to share. This video is more than 90% video recorded originally in 4K at 60 frames per second, but due to compatibility issues with my phone that does all of the processing, it was reduced down to 1080p, but however this is still HD quality. 
The Grand Canyon was the inspiration naming this multi-episode series as the Grand Vacation Series, a vacation my family and I took over the summer of July 2021. If you haven't seen episode 1 on the Bryce Canyon in Utah yet, the link is in the description. And coming up next is a short episode on the Zion Narrows River hike and then followed by the Horseshoe Bend. And once again, thanks for watching and supporting my new channel. I hope you like the content. God bless. Big Dave out. Till next time.